Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this series about our journey with the Quran. This journey is going to last for, inshallah, the whole month of Ramadan. So every day we are going to stop at some of the beautiful ayat of the Quran, especially in the juz that would be recited this particular night in uh, the Taraweeh in Ramadan. Uh, this is not by default a, a uh, tafsir of the Quran, it's just some comments, some reminders, some observations about some of the ayat. So we're going to stop at some of the significant ayat, and all of the ayat of the Quran, of course, are significant. We're going to stop to ponder upon some of the deep meanings of some of these ayat. The scholars of Quran, by the way, when they look at the Quran in general, which is a book of life, it's not just a book of to, to be recited or to be memorized. It's a book of life. It's, uh, it shapes our way of understanding the life and living that life. So these scholars, when they talk about the Quran in general and the main themes in the Quran, they mention that the Quran can be divided into some major themes. One of them would be the dogma or the creed, al-aqidah or al-aqaid. And another one would be the rituals, al-ibadat, how to perform our rituals to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deserve His mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala entitling us to paradise bi idnillah. The third one is interactions or transactions that take place among the human beings. So between the Muslims themselves and between the Muslims and the non-Muslims, different types of interactions. And then the fourth one is the manners and the morals or al-akhlaq. In a different way, another classification of the main themes of the Qur'an, and this is my personal understanding, the way I personally see it, uh, Qur'an can also, we can look at the main themes in the Qur'an as probably four main themes. The first one is telling us about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His mercy and His kindness introduced His great self subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. So that we would recognize why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone worthy of being worshipped and not any of the idols and not any of the partners that people associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So in this domain we're going to find beautiful ayat like ayat al-Kursi for example Allahu nur, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum or the ayah that's called ayat al-nur Allahu nur al-samawati wal-ard and different other ayat that talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the unique, infinite, complete and perfect powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this would be our means to recognize who is our creator and why does he subhanahu wa ta'ala deserve our love, our devotion and our allegiance. The second main theme in the Quran is, talking us, is telling us about a very old battle. The battle that's an eternal battle that started with the creation of uh, humankind on this earth, Sayyidina Adam ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam, or even before he was descended to earth with the creation of Sayyidina Adam ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. And that is an eternal battle that's going to continue as long as life continues on this earth. It's the battle between truth and falsehood, al-haqq wal batil and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the very beginning of this battle when the shaytan refused to prostrate to Sayyidina Adam ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam based on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Later on we're going to talk about the false logic of the shaytan and how some people unfortunately today are mimicking that same false logic of the shaytan. So that's the second main theme of the Quran telling us about this eternal battle between the truth and the falsehood. And in this theme, we're going to find the different phases or the different battles, battles of this big war, continuous war, eternal war. So we're going to find the stories of the different prophets and messengers, ala nabina wa alayhim salatu wasalam, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them with the truth to their people, how some of the people followed the, the truth and the guidance from their prophets, and many or most of the people rejected that truth and uh, they deserved the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third main theme of the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again with his mercy and his kindness subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us 
the results of that battle. Not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the events of these continuous battles forming that eternal war, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us about the end of this battle and the results of, of these battles or this war in the form of the, the hereafter, the accountability, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his pious servants, obedient servants, which is his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala and paradise, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the rebellious ones, the ones who rejected to follow the guidance that the prophets and messengers came with, and they selected to follow the path of falsehood rather than following the path of the truth. So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the peace of mind to know exactly what would be the end result if we select to follow the path of righteousness and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a warning about what would happen if someone selects to follow the other path. So that would be the third theme of the Quran talking about Al-Jannah, Wal-Nar, the paradise and the hellfire and the enjoyment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his obedient servants in paradise and the punishment that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who selected not to follow the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the fourth and the last theme of the Quran is what kind of provision should the believers take on that journey uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What should they do and what should they abstain from? So the do's and the don'ts which is the part that deals with the legislation or the regulations or the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And usually we're going to find these commandments coming in two major forms. The first form is addressed to all of mankind, all of the creation, Ya ayyuhan nas. And another one addressed particularly to those among mankind who selected voluntarily to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this particular specific group Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses with a very beautiful address Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu So whenever we hear Ya ayyuhal nas or whenever we hear Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu let's listen carefully because this is a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an instruction a piece of guidance on that path leading to bi'idnillah the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what should we do and what should we abstain from or stop from doing? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a summary of that in the beautiful ayah, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Which means take your provision and the best provision, provision is mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, observing the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way that he subhanahu wa ta'ala should be feared. So these are the four major themes in the Quran. So I'm inviting my brothers and sisters, whenever we are reading the Quran, let's ponder upon the ayat and think about them. Where does this ayah fall? Is this an ayah that's talking about the majesty and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we would contemplate it and we would fill our minds and our hearts and our senses with awe and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us for example inna fi khalq samawati wal ard wa ikhtilaf al layl wal nahar la ayat li ulil albab that in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the variation of and the alternation of the night and the day there are signs to those who are mindful those who think those who ponder those who do not just pass by these signs without paying attention to them those that have been criticized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayah وَكَأَيِّ مِّنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا غَافِلُونَ وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ that there are so many ayat so many signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in the creation around us, in the heavens and the earth, and indeed even in our own selves, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْأَفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَّ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ So we're going to show them our signs in the horizons, wherever they look, they're going to see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they are short-sighted, they cannot see that far, 
they don't have to look too far just look into your own self look at my own self I should look at my own self and see all the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the perfection of his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is an invitation for us whenever we pass by an ayah that's talking about the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recognize that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of being worshipped and then when we pass by another ayah that's talking about the story of, of a prophet or a messenger and how that story keeps repeating itself in different cycles as we find for example in Surah Al-Shu'ara one of the very beautiful surah of the Quran and all of the surah of the Quran are beautiful we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these cycles one after another these waves one after another of the different prophets and messengers ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wassalam who have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with guidance and how the story starts with kathabat so the people of this prophet or messenger denied him they did not believe in him and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the some of the details and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to the end of the story what was the end punishment for that group who selected not to obey their prophet and messenger so when we pass by these ayat we should remember that shaitan is working relentlessly to fulfill his promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the promise that he made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's going to try to misguide as many people as possible and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to that nasty challenge by saying subhanahu wa ta'ala inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan illa man ittaba'aka min al -ghawin. you do not really have any control over my servants those who select to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you do not have any control over them except for those who select to follow you on the uh, the stray path not the straight path instead of following the straight path leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have gone astray to follow the shaitan and the leaders of misguidance so when, whenever we pass by some of these ayat let's remember where is our allegiance where do we select to align ourselves do we select to align ourselves among the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have been described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the victorious ones or do we select or do some people select to follow the other party the party of the shaitan which eventually is gonna taste the loss and the punishment for disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then whenever we pass by an ayah that is reminding us of our future our eternal future bi'idhnillah in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his paradise let's think about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us and let's feel that whatever sacrifices we do in this life are nothing compared to the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us on the day of judgment anyone who studied math would know that anything compared to infinity is equal to zero so however long we live 60 70 80 100 years compared to eternity that is nothing that's just a fraction of a second or even less than that as the non-believers are going to recognize on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks them for how long have you lived on this earth oh we have lived for just a day or even a fraction of a day ask those who have been counting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tell them indeed that you have lived for a very short period on the earth and now you are paying the price of what you have sent forward if you sent forward good deeds with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his kindness and generosity you're going to be rewarded with paradise if it is the other way you will pay dearly for your rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so whenever we pass by an ayah of al-jannah or an-nar again let's pay attention to that and prepare ourselves to be entitled or to be recipients of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which with the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entitles us to paradise and finally when as I said at the beginning when we hear ya ayyuhal nas or ya ayyuhal ladina amanu let us recognize that this is a call direct call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to each and every one of us individually and collectively as a group so 
whenever we hear that address from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how are we going to respond to that? Are we going to respond it to, to it with attention, listening carefully to what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us to do and following that guidance? Or are we going to turn a blind eye and a deaf ear and turn our backs to this advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us enjoy the journey with the Quran along the 30 nights of Ramadan. And inshallah, uh, I hope that by the end of Ramadan, we have gained at least a deeper understanding of the ayat. I'm reminding one more time, this is not a tafsir of the Quran. These are just thoughts and comments for each and every one of us. And I hope that everyone would have some time to dedicate in the month of Ramadan as we read the Quran or as we try to memorize some of the ayat of the Quran to also complement that with the understanding of the Quran and not only that, don't stop there, but with the implementation of the Quran in our own lives. Inshallah, in this series that we're going to call a few minutes with the Quran or 15 for 30, 15 minutes every day for 30 nights, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our siyam and our qiyam and our recitation of the Quran and our pondering on the ayat of the Quran. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on the day of judgment, we find that in our scale of good deeds, أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته